Section 2. Operating with Input-Output. In this video, we will read from standard in, count the bytes, and write to standard out. Let's go over the flow of data through our project. We will take data from standard in, have it flow through Pipe Viewer, our project, and then out to standard out. Along the way, we will take some measurements and emit some progress to standard error. Let's go implement that in our project. Let's go to our project and open up main.rs. The first thing we need to do is to add our use statement. Read and write are traits that need to be in scope so we can use the methods they define. Self is there so that we import IO itself. Why? Because in idiomatic Rust, you access functions through their parent module. And we need to use the standard in and standard out functions from the IO module. Since we'll be using a method that expects a fixed size buffer when reading a chunk of data, let's define a constant that we can use to size the buffer. Then, when we want to experiment with the size later, it's here at the top in an understandable way, instead of a magic number buried in the code. I arbitrarily chose 16 kilobytes for the size of the chunk, and I wrote it out as 16 times 1024 because I find that more readable. Notice that this is a constant, so I put all caps for the constant, I put the type, which is U size, which is what we need for the size of an array, and the 16 times 1024 happens at compile time, and then the result gets stored in the executable. Now let's remove the hello world and create our fixed size buffer. It needs to be mutable so that we can fill it with our bytes. Now it's time to get access to standard in and read some bytes into the buffer. IO standard in is a function which returns a standard in struct. Dot read is a method that takes a mutable reference to our fixed size buffer and returns a result that is the number of bytes read upon success or an error. For now, I will handle all errors by calling unwrap and crashing if they occur. Later in this section, we will revisit error handling and do things more gracefully. We will store the number of bytes that we read in the numread local variable. Next, we will output some progress to standard error. Rather than deal with standard error itself, we will use the ePrintLine macro to handle the string formatting and output for us. The progress that we're outputting at this point is just the number of bytes that we've read. Finally, let's pass the unmodified bytes to standard out. Similar to earlier, we retrieved standard out via a function in the I.O. module, and then we used the write all method of standard out, which accepts a slice of bytes and returns a result which contains either an empty unit type upon success or an error if it was unable to write to standard out. Once again, we simply unwrap the result and crash if there was an error. Let's go to the terminal and try this out. Our program has compiled and is running. In fact, it's blocked on standard in, waiting for some input. So if we type something like ABC and then press enter, we see that it works. NumRed is 4, ABC gets passed back out to the output, and the program terminates after one read. Now let's go back and refactor our program to work with more than one 16 kilobyte chunk of data. Our code is correct. We just need to do it multiple times, so let's start by adding a loop. Okay, we've added an infinite loop. Next up, let's keep track of the total number of bytes. We start total bytes at zero, obviously, and then it needs to be mutable so we can add to it each iteration of the loop. What else needs to change? We're creating a buffer on every iteration through the loop. That's sort of inefficient. But it works. I'm going to leave it for right now. Let's go on. 
Here we're getting up to chunk size of data every iteration through the loop, and then we have num read as the amount of data that was read on this iteration of the loop. That's okay. But what if no data was received? Read blocks until it receives data. So if it returns zero, that means the end of data has been reached. Let's take off the unwrap. Now this is a result that we can match on to handle loop termination. We need to remember to match the most specific condition first, which in this case is when we get an OK with the size zero. When that happens, we'll break out of the loop because we're done. The next condition is when we're receiving any other amount of data, we'll just pass it back to be stored in numred. Since we are handling result explicitly, let's handle the error case too though I'm just going to put the placeholder underscore variable and ignore the error and break out of the loop. Since we are using the result of the match expression, we need to put a semicolon after the closing brace. Now let's look at the ePrint line. Do we actually want to print out numred every time through the loop? I don't think so. That'd be a little crazy. So let's move the ePrint line outside of the block, outside of the loop. And then let's just print it once for the total. So I'll take off this numred header and change numred to total bytes. Okay, great. But total bytes is going to be zero because we never changed it anywhere. So let's go do that. Total bytes plus equals numred. And then all we have left is writing the data from our buffer that we create every iteration of the loop out to standard out. That looks fine. So I think we're all good to go. All right, cargo run, it builds. Okay, now it's running. Let's put in ABC like last time. Okay, and a different behavior. Now we have the loop. It was blocking on input. We gave it some input, but didn't get an end of file. And so it's blocking on input again on the second iteration of the loop. So let's give it the end of file character by pressing Control D on Mac or Linux or Control Z on Windows. I'm on Mac, so I'll press Control D, and you'll see that we got 4, which is the output, on top of caret D, which is what my terminal printed first, and then 4 printed on top of it. Let's clear the screen and run through another example. Let's try running more than 16 kilobytes through our program. I'm going to generate a file that has 128 kilobytes of random data. There we can see that my file has 128 kilobytes of random data. Let's pass it through our program. First, let's build the binary. Okay, the binary was already built. Now let's use it directly. Okay, so we catted my file, piped the bytes to our program, then redirected the output to my file too. Now here's our standard error, so that's 128 kilobytes. Remember there's 1,024 bytes per kilobyte. Let's look at the files. They are indeed the same size. If we do look at the bytes, they're exactly the same size. And if we diff them, they are exactly the same. 